upper degrees. Still gets cold overnight, though, dropping down into the 40s. That's it. Boy, Tom Hooper has made some fantastic movies. The King's Speech, uh, Les Miserables among them. A friend of mine said he feels the performance of the year is Eddie Renmade in The Danish Girl. Is he mistaken? Oh, well, that's uh, amazing that you, you might say that. Um, uh, no, it's been a, pa a passion project for all of us. Um, I fell in love with this script seven years ago when I was in early pre-production of The King's Speech, incredibly right. moved by the love story at the centre. But on this film, that makes me a relative newbie because my producer, Gail, uh, has been working on it for 15 years. Wow. The option, the novel, the, the Danish Girl, in 2000. So it's been a real passion project for all of us. And, and, and these passion projects are often like pushing a ball up the hill. Mm. And what made it finally brought to fruition? The success you've had with these other movies? The, Eddie's profile increasing? Um, well, uh, I think it's partly about the casting. I, I had Eddie in mind from when I first read the script. Uh, we'd worked together when he was like a 22-year-old kid actor with Helen Mirren on Elizabeth I for HBO. Uh, but, but, I, but I handed him uh, the script of, Le, uh, of The Danish Girl in, a, in an unmarked brown paper envelope on the barricades of Les Miserables in French Pinewood in London. And he, he took it home and fell in love with the script as well. And uh, I'm told that when you saw the audition for Alicia, mm. you actually cried. Yeah, I mean, it, it was very funny because uh, um, Alicia came in for, 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 for a screen test and, you know, we, we did a, a, a very moving scene just after Lily kisses Henrik, it's the morning after, and we get to the end of the first take and Alicia is so emotionally powerful that, that I'm in tears and Eddie yeah. turns to me and goes, there's no great suspense who you're going to cast now, Hooper. And I'm, like, I'm like, no, I'm completely objective. Let's go again. I've got lots of notes. I don't know quite what the notes are. But... <laughs> so I completely bust myself. Uh, yeah. We're going to look at a clip in a moment, but for the uninitiated, the, and it's hard to do this, I suppose, the log line of the story is... Well, in this scene, you're about to see Lily has been living as Einar, a Danish artist, all his life, and this is the first time that he comes out into the public world um, as Lily it, into a quite an intense situation, which, which is an artist ball in Denmark. It's an exclusive clip for us. Take a look at this. My darling! Hola. Let me introduce. It's Lily. <laughs> That's right. I know his cousin from Baila. My dear. How exquisite! <laughs> in, let's go in. Come on. Don't leave me. No, never. How completely unusual was something like this for that period of time? Um, I mean, the, it, this is the 1920s. Uh, you know, th there was absolutely no precedent for it. I mean, the word transgender didn't exist. There was no roadmap to, 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 to transition. And I, and I think that what the film teaches you or, lo or looks at is that, you know, if, if, you're if you have a block between you and the, the, the true version of yourself, you know, and, you know, being, not identifying with the gender you're assigned at birth is surely the most profound of blocks, I think it's love that opens up a, a space of transformation. In this film, uh, Gerda loves uh, Lily so much in this marriage. It's such an extraordinary, unconditional love that this wonderful space opens up where, where, where Lily can emerge. And so, you know, at the centre of this film is this wonderful love story. Is, is it the material, is it the performances, or is it that very rare alchemy of both? Because I think of The King's Speech. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it, it, like the King's Speech, it's got this great, you know, two-hander at the centre. But but, it, but it's about it's about you know finding great actors. And um, you know, I had Alicia and I had Eddie, who you know halfway through the shoot, um, he said, "Do you mind if I have a long weekend?" And I said, "Well, there's no way you can have a long weekend. We're in the middle of shooting, buddy, and it's not going to happen." And he said, "Well, just just Monday." And and then he explained that it was for something called the Academy Awards. <laughs> so I said, "Well, okay, you can have Monday off." And then he he came back Tuesday morning straight from the airport, and you know. How was it? Sounds fantastic. And I was sort of looking at my watch a little bit, and then he saw me look at it, and he said, said, we should crack on. And I said, yeah. And we went straight back to work. And, you know, the extraordinary thing about Eddie is, he, 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 if I hadn't switched on television and spoken to anyone in the world or opened any newspaper in the world, I'd have no idea he just won an Academy Award. He was so focused before and after. He never brought it up? Yeah, I mean, he was, just, you know, he was, he was completely there for me, and you know, that, he, he's got the most astonishing concentration. He's a wonderful actor. Terrific. Very nice to see Thank you, Tom. Thanks you. so much. We'll Thank tell you, The Danish Girl opens in Los Angeles and New York November 27th. It expands nationwide in December. And as award season looms, we're going to be hearing a lot more about it. Thanks again, Tom. Thanks, Thanks Sam. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Thanks, coming Megan. up, uh, we'll take you inside the most expensive home.